This is Laborts, and it is so nice to have you here. These are the paints you need. Once again, I'm using the Painted Mini from the Kickstarter campaign painted by Big Child Creatives as a reference. Copying other artists' work is a great way to improve your skills, and I really love the style of Big Child Creative. Alright guys, we start with the cloak. Papa Labors usually starts with the skin, but since we have a cloak, it's going to be harder for us if we paint the skin first and then the cloak, because it would be easier to mess up the skin. I'm using Word Barrows Red to sketch out our first layer. I do leave some black on the folds that are facing down. I'm using thin layers and a bit of stippling. To have thin layers, just add a tiny bit of water to your paint on your wet palette and increase the opacity of the color by adding multiple layers over time. This will increase the smoothness, but make sure you don't fiddle too much with the paint and rip it off while it's drying. That will not look smooth and I will slap on your tiny hand. After that, I smooth out the transition with some glazes, so add a bit more water or glaze medium to your paint and offload your brush on a paper towel to remove the excess paint and move the paint from the black to the red part. Same brush motion every time. It's a bit hard with clocks, because the folds are a bit complex shapes and we really need to know where our light source comes from. Always try to follow the shape of the folds when you are using glazes on a clock like this. This is a very smooth surface, so we want to communicate that with our layers. Now it's time for Papa Labor's favorite red, Evil Sun's Scarlet. Reduce the highlight areas and highlight the top parts of the foils. Use thin layers to sketch the highlights and cover 50% of the clock with this color. This will be our mid-tone. The mid-tone is the color that our mini would read us when we look at it. To blend in this layer, I will use the airbrush to achieve a quick and smooth gradient. If you don't have an airbrush, just use glazes like we did before. My compressor is at 3 PSA and the mixture is one part paint and one part thinner. It's quite thin and I'm using small bursts around the areas that I like to blend. Always check the consistency that is coming from the airbrush on your hand first and only then spray it over your mini, so you won't ruin your previous layers and I won't have to slap on your tiny hand. Let's give some depth to our shadowy parts. I'm using Galvor back red in a glaze consistency, so it's more like uh, one part uh, paint and two part thinner. I'm applying small bursts again. This will not only smooth out the values between the darkest shadows and our first shadow color, which was the word bearers red, but also add some depth to the shadows. This is a great dark burgundy color, Papa Laborts really likes it. This is the color of Granny's feet if I put a too tight sack on her. I try to aim from below, so the highlights won't receive this color, but since I'm using a very thin consistency, overspraying is not a big deal. Check the consistency on your hand again, and if your paint is webbing, then reduce the pressure on your compressor a bit. For our maximum highlights, I use White Rider Red, aiming for the top part of the folds again. Use thin layers, so it will blend in with the airbrush layer with more ease. If your paint is thick, then it will be very obvious which part was done by the airbrush and which part was done with a brush. And Papa Laborts will send you a little package and when you open it, I will slap on your tiny hand. So aim for a smooth finish when painting the clock. If you suddenly think it uh, looks like Granny's butt cheek, then you are on the right path with the smoothness. After 
after that I used the really thin glaze of Evil Sun Scarlet to get back our mid-tone a bit. I'm not painting this over the brightest highlights, only next to them. This will also help with blending, because we are basically glazing from the bright to the darker areas. Two or three very thin coats should do the job, and with that our cloak is done for now. Now let's work on the skin. I start with Kavari Brown, but Dumbul Brown could be a good alternative as well. I cover everything with this color, expect the extreme shadows under the shoulder muscle and the brow ridge. Use a base layer consistency to have a nice and opaque finish. Once again, don't play with the paint for too long on one section, otherwise you'll rip off drying paint and your layers won't be smooth, no matter what you do with them. And obviously I will slap on your tiny hand. Also cover the right side of the boots with this color. After that, glaze over the extreme shadows to have a smooth finish. I don't let the paint pool in the crevices, so offload your brush on a paper towel and only apply thin layers. Then I move to Bugman's Glow to sketch out the highlights. I cover around 60% of our previous layer, focusing on the top part of the shoulders and biceps. The forearms are basically two cylinders uh, next to each other with a little shadow separating them, so highlight them as such. The face needs highlights on the cheekbones, nose and forehead. Since our chin and jawline are covered with beard, uh, we don't need to highlight them. Leave a little bit of a darker part around the temple of the skull, so the shapes will be nicely readable. This is the part where we also highlight the fingers. Those are just tiny cylinders again, so try to highlight the top part of them. You can cover almost every finger with this color, uh, because we will add higher value layers to make them more defined later. It's not easy, because the sculpt is a bit rough around the hands, uh, but Papa Laborts is here and will help you by holding your tiny hand to make it through those mold line heavy fingers. Also, removing the mold lines also helps a lot. Blend in our Bugman's glow layer, uh, like we did before, using some glazes. Don't let the paint pull in the recesses, so once again, offload your brush on a paper towel every time you want to blend with glazes. Alright, let's push our values on the skin with KDM Flash, uh, reducing the highlight areas. As you see guys, I painted the eyes, but I couldn't record it, because they are really small and not really sculpted, so let's just say I didn't paint them for the first try, but that's okay, uh, eyes on this scale are hard to paint. The good thing about it, you only need to do them right once. Unless you screw them up with your skin highlights, but I'm sure you wouldn't do such a thing. So cover the majority of our Bugman's Glow layer with KDM Flash. Try to add some tone to the muscles with that color, especially on the shoulders, and keep highlighting the face by gradually decreasing the highlight area. push the contrast a bit more, I use Kislev Flash. Use this highlight really close to the eyes lower part, but try to leave a super tiny line between the highlight and the shadow color, so the eye would remain more defined. I'm also blending at this step by diluting the paint to create a glaze consistency. After that, I give it a really thin glaze to the shadows and mid-tones with the red. This is very diluted, just like when we used it on the cloak, 
or dilute it even more so your skin won't end up uh, sunburned. This is just a small touch to make the skin more alive. Your brush stroke should end over the shadow colors and not uh, on the highlights because we don't want to mute back the highlights with this color, okay? Okay. Papa Laborts add some ice yellow to the Kislev flesh. Only use it in tiny areas like the top of the shoulders and the small amount on the forehead. This will help to keep the focal point on the face. With that, our skin is done. Let's work on that wonderful hair. I use Katachan Flash as the first layer for the maximum shadows. Since Thor is blonde, we don't really need black in his hair. Then I went back to Cavalry Brown, covering most part of the Katachan flesh layer. When we are painting hair, first we highlight the shapes of the hair and not picking out the hair locks one by one. If you have a basic understanding on how to highlight shapes, that kind of knowledge can be useful painting basically everything. So keep practicing that and your painting sessions will be much more easier and faster. Leave a little bit of Katashan flesh where the hair meets the skin so it will act as a black line and make the different sections more defined and separated. Now mix some Balor Brown to the Cavalry Brown and reduce the highlight areas. At this step, try to pick out smaller and smaller shapes on the hair, but these shapes should follow the hair locks and start to bring down into hair locks around the edges of the highlight. I also use this color to highlight the right side of the boot on the right foot and uh, try to paint along the leather straps that create the boot. We are leaving the other boot darker because we want to paint an OSL effect later. With pure Balor Brown, reduce the highlight areas even more and now you can paint some hair locks one by one. I'm sure you guys were shaking by now. You see guys, I'm following the same steps. Since we build up our layers values gradually and with thin layers, you don't really need to glaze over the hair. It is better like this because glazing could ruin our recess shadows if we are not careful enough. And not only that, but our tiny hands can receive a huge slap. We push the values on the hair and beard with Zamesi Desert. Try to focus on the locks that are on the top and uh, use tiny proportions so we don't lose our previous layers. But don't be afraid to make mistakes. You need to make mistakes so you can improve as a painter. If you are not interested in that, that's perfectly fine, but uh, don't be afraid of making mistakes. Also, don't forget to highlight the boot as well with Balor Baron. If you want to skip the OSL effect, then highlight both of the boots with uh, previous colors. I mean, uh, later we are going to paint an OSL effect. Uh, but Papa Labors dares you to try and paint the OSL effect. Especially because that part of the tutorial is Patreon exclusive, so be brave and be a Patreon of Papa Labors for only 2 euro a month. Now let's paint the inside of the mouth with a base layer of Word Barrels Red. After that highlight the tip of the tongue with a thin layer of White Rider Red. Then add a lot of white to our Katachan flesh or any brown basically to paint the teeth. We don't need screaming white teeth even though it would fit with our uh, glamorous hair uh, we painted. I thought the hair could use a bit more contrast so I add some ice yellow to the Zamesi Desert. 
and painted the maximum highlights. If you watched other Papa Labors tutorials, then uh, you may have realized we used the same colors that would be perfect for a good animal. How interesting is this? No one cares except me. Okay, moving on. Alright, let's cover his vest, pants and bracelets with uh, dark sea blue. The vest is a dark greenish blue, uh, so dark sea blue is a great foundation for that. The pants are uh, faint greyish purple, but we can use dark sea blue for the shadowy parts for that. Use thin layers of thunderhook blue to highlight the chest. Try to follow the folds on the muscles and uh, on the torso to get uh, realistic highlights. We apply this color over 60% of our dark sea blue layer, so it will still read as a dark color. It's very easy to over highlight surfaces, but curb your highlight procedure or I will slap on your tiny head. Thunderhook blue will blend in nicely with dark sea blue if you use thin layers, but if you feel like it, uh, you could smooth out the transition with some glazes. After that, I add some white to our thunderhook blue to achieve some desaturated highlights. Really work around the muscles and try to leave a tiny bit of dark sea blue under the pecs so the muscles will be nicely defined. Highlight the edges with this color as well. Try to reach maximum opacity with this color on the chest. Then I use the similar mixture but used ice yellow instead of white. This will desaturate our thunderhook blue as well, but a little bit of yellow wouldn't hurt, so I painted this color over the highlights we previously sketched out. Papa Labors completely forget about the bracers, so I painted them using the same colors. Try to highlight the lower edge of the hose uh, on the wrist guards. Use a base layer consistency for that and just gently paint with the edge of your brush's tip. If you use too much pressure uh, on the brush, the edge highlights uh, will be too thick and, uh, and they will look like uh, poop. After that, I started working on the pants. I just sketched the highlights around the leg muscles with a base layer consistency. Wait a minute, Papa Labor's not building up the layer slowly. Yeah, I know, don't worry, this step <laughs> uh, threw me off a bit. Uh, then I mix some demon at height with the dark sea blue to get back some of our shadows. Uh, try to lead a little bit of shadow between the lower masses on the thigh and the kneecap. This is only a soft shadow to make the leg more defined. Uh, on the left leg, you can cover the whole tie with uh, this color since we want that side to be darker. After that, I thought Worfin Grey was a bit bright. Uh, see, I <laughs> see, I told you that step threw me off completely. So I went over with uh, Demonite Hide and blend in the Demonite Hide with some glazes on uh, both legs. Now in a smaller area on the right leg, I created a highlight with Warfin Grey. Uh, Papa Labors goes back and forth sometimes. This is quite an organic process when you are painting something, but I try to keep these uh, back and forth steps to a minimum because I know it's a bit uh, frustrating if you try to follow along. But uh, be patient with Papa Labors, or I will slap on your tiny hand. Lastly, I create a soft highlight on the upper half of the tie with a mix of Warfin Grey and Ice Yellow. Moving the paint from the darker to the brighter area to have a smooth gradient. Then I painted the belt and hammer grip with uh, Kavari Brown. Try to leave a little bit of thin black line between the grooves of the grip to make it look more defined and it will add some depth to the surface. After this step, Papa Labors got himself a cup of coffee and uh, watched some uh, cat videos on the internet with uh, Granny Labors and totally forgot what he was working on. So let's jump to the animal part, but don't worry, we will finish the belt and the, and the grip of the hammer uh, later. So cover all the plates with the dark sea blue. I know we could have the, done this when we painted the, the vest itself but uh, we are doing it now. By the way guys, if you find these tutorials helpful, 
please leave a like and a comment. It really helps a lot. And just like that, we are back on the belt. Uh, try to paint only the grooves on the belt and uh, leave out the recesses so our highlights will be a lot cleaner and the belt won't lose uh, detail. This is not a huge step in value so it will blend like granny's butt cheek. Uh, I only paint the right side of the belt and leaving the other side darker. Then we go in with Baylor Brown and highlight the upper part of the details on the belt. Try to accent the pattern that goes around on the belt and don't lose the texture. I know it's not easy, because it's not really detailed all the way, but Papa Labors believes in you. Continue the process with uh, Zamesi Desert, picking out smaller and smaller details. Uh, watch for your paint consistency, don't use a too diluted paint, otherwise it will flow into the recesses and I will slap on your tiny hand. Even if that happens, just rinse your brush, and remove the water from it on a paper towel and uh, just soak up the paint from the recesses uh, with your brush. Add some ice yellow to the Zamesi Desert and focus on the top part of the edges. You don't have to do it along the whole belt, only the part that we highlighted previously. Now back to the plates. These plates are very shiny. I'm working on the darker part of these metal plates and most important thing to have a very clean paint job is to leave a little bit of dark sea blue between the binding and the plate itself. It's not easy to do and we need to do that uh, with the rest of the highlight colors as well. If you make a mistake, no biggie, just fix it with dark sea blue and go back with demonet hide. On the hammer, I try to add some extra texture with some tiny lines and dots and increase the highlights on the top half parts. I reduce the highlight areas with Warp Fin Grey by creating smaller triangle shaped highlights. Use a thicker consistency for sketching the highlights and a thinner for blending. That's why Papa Labor said a lot of times to try practice blending with different paint consistencies. Because blending with glazes it doesn't mean it had to take like a hundred coats of paint to get a smooth transition, only a few, if you use the right consistency. Try to add more and more water and watch how the paint behave. But at this step we are using a thicker paint consistency. Let's push the contrast on the NMM uh, with light grey. Generally the binding on the plates are uh, more highlighted on the top left side and you can create a smaller highlight section on the lower right side. On the plates itself we focus more on the top part uh, with the bigger highlights. Cover almost like the half of the plate and add a lot smaller highlight on the lower left part. These plates are circles ending in a pointy shape. When we are highlighting objects like this, we need to paint the highlights as a radial sector on the plate. So you see where my highlights end. 
uh, the edges of the highlights going straight in the middle on the plates. This is crucial because if your lines not going like this, then the highlights going to feel out of place. So be really careful with this. Take your time because this NMM plates really pushes the paint job into the wow factor. But if your highlights are wrong and out of place, then it's going to push it into the eh factor. Okay? Okay. This part, I glazed just a little bit between the bigger sections of warp wind and the light gray, but as you can see, for the most part, I kept the straight lines. I just wanted to add some variation uh, of smoothness. And once again, don't let the paint run into the crevices of the bindings, because I will slap on your tiny hand. Now I'm using verdigris, but if you have a ultra grey, that would uh, work just as fine. And push the highlights in the light grey layer, by going closer and closer to the edges of the binding. On the top big plates, I did actually painted some demonite hide uh, into the recesses, because I thought it was too dark of a crevice, since the plate is pretty much facing up uh, toward the light source. So it felt a little bit unnatural. Anyway, it's optional like the whole tutorial, but it makes the NMM a lot more believable. On the hammer, I outlined the edges as well uh, as on the belt buckle. Alright, little bit of update. I did some edge highlights on the binding, but I couldn't record the process because I need to look at it really, really close. So use a base layer consistency to do that and try to leave a little bit of darksy blue between the verdigris uh, edge highlights. Or paint a thin line of darksy blue later, but you do need the, this little dark line to look crispy. Now back to the hammer's grip. See? Papa Labors didn't forget that. Highlight the right side with uh, some Cavalry Brown and Balor Brown mix, leaving a little bit of black between the leather straps for more definition. Then do a smaller section on the other side as well. After that, use a little bit of Balor Brown, but now only on the right side, and with that, our grip is down. See, Papa Labors is like an elephant. He never forgot a thing. Which reminds me. Did I give any water to Granny Labort today? Never mind. Let's push the values with a little bit of ivory. Just some stippling and edge highlight on the hammer, but we can also do it on the brightest spots of the plates. It's really uh, just a tiny touch. Alright guys, the painting tutorial for the base and the OSL effect are Patreon exclusive. You can find the Patreon link in the video description. So thank you for joining me on this little painting adventure. A huge thanks to my Patreons who support these kind of videos, with special shout out to Jonathan Rhodes, Coldberry Dom, Trying to Paint Minis, Jonathan Mosner, Rulzak, Vlad D, Urtepel21, Paints and Games, and Joseph Ebenheim. If you want to support Papa Laborci's work, you can do that on Patreon, where you will have early access to these videos and you can vote on the next mini. Also, if you need a little bit of extra help, online coaching is also available. I hope the rest of your day will be as smooth as a granny's butt cheek.